Coming up on Tech News Today, it's Tablet Palooza. Is Microsoft winning? Is Apple still winning? Is Google going to start winning with a new tablet? And Spotify takes on Pandora. Which one is on the side of the humans? We'll tell you that and more next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Tuesday, June 19th, 2012. Tech News Today is brought to you by ShareFile. Enhance your workflow, send files of almost any size easily and securely with ShareFile by Citrix. Try ShareFile today. For a 30-day free trial, go to ShareFile.com, click the radio microphone, and enter the promo code TNT. And by Gazelle, the easy way to sell your iPhone, iPad, iPod, or Android smartphones from your home or office so you can get the latest versions. Get a risk-free quote that's good for 30 days at Gazelle.com. And by Carbonite Online Backup. Automatic, continual, and unlimited backup for your computer files for only $59 a year. Try it free at Carbonite.com and use promo code TNT and get two bonus months with purchase. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Maya Zachar. And I'm Jason Howell. Sarah Lane coming to us from the web in London. Well, you're actually coming to us from London where you're at to go to the web. How's it going, Sarah? Um, it's really good. Uh, London is beautiful right now. I really got lucky the last couple of days. No rain. The sun is shining. Everybody's happy. You're, you're there for work, startups. Sarah. So how is the web? Did you so go? Many deal, so many deals being <laughs> made. <laughs> also joining us today. No, look, oh, go ahead. Web, yeah, go. No, it's... Also joining us today, Brian Brushwood, author of Scam School Book 2, which is oh out. Oh, my gosh. It is finally out. If you go to scamschoolbook.com, today is the release day. We're trying to get the whole world to buy it. We dropped book one to 99 cents so that we could try to cheat its way up to number one. However, I have breaking news. Uh, Fifty Shades of Grey still dominates the nah. number one, two, and three spots. <laughs> it's a tough competitor. Tough competitor to yeah, take yeah, out. Yeah. And especially when there's like 16 versions of that well, book, maybe, it Brian, seems like. Maybe, you should have scammed your way into this. You could have 51 Shades of Grey. That should be your next See, book. Uh, the 51st Shade is what I should have called there it. There you go. <laughs> book three, The 51st Shade. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got uh, lots of stuff to discuss, including uh, more about those new Microsoft Surface tablets. But let's start with the top 10 stories in the news feeds. Google sent a letter to YouTube-MP3.org informing the site operators that they violate YouTube's terms of services. YouTube-MP3.org is one of many sites that will convert a YouTube link into an MP3, something any user could do from their own computer if they wanted. Torrent Freak uh, reports that Google has also apparently blocked YouTube-MP3.org servers from accessing YouTube. If you go to Surface.com, you'll read some interesting fine print. It says, looking for the Samsung SUR40 with Microsoft Pixel Sense? Visit PixelSense.com. That refers to the big LCD panel that was just updated at CES 2011, so not really that recently, costing $15,000. If you click on that Pixel Sense URL, you'll get a Bing search page that points to various Surface 1.0 technology, which is kind of nice smoke and mirror strategy on Microsoft's part, keeping the Surface name under wraps. Senator Chuck Schumer wrote a letter to the CEOs of Apple and Google asking the companies about their mapping equipment. Now, Schumer wants the companies to give communities notice when mapping will occur, ensure infrastructure details like power or water grids are blurred, as well as offer individuals the option to opt out of published maps. Most importantly, and this is a quote from Schumer's letter, quote, people on Long Island or in Buffalo have a reasonable expectation of privacy when they decide to have a barbecue on their back deck. What about me? What if I have a barbecue on my back deck? He's not your senator. I'm not in Long Island or Buffalo. What if you were visiting? It doesn't matter. 
Uh, Pairing-based cryptography just got a new benchmark. Fujitsu Laboratory said on Monday it broke a world record for the time it takes to successfully crack the next-generation cryptography standard. Fujitsu and its partners Japan National Institute of Information and Communications Technology and Kyushu University took 148.2 days to carry out a cryptanalysis of the 278-digit 923-bit pairing-based cryptography space, a task that had been thought to require several hundred thousand years. All right, so here's my best Pandora impression. Ready? Oh, boy. Mom, Spotify's copying me. Mom, Spotify's touching me. The streaming service (laughs) announced that true ad-supported DMCA-compliant internet radio in the U.S., rivaling Pandora in every way, except Pandora uses an algorithm and uh, Spotify uses the social graph for music selection, which is pretty much all the sets that apart from Pandora. <sighs> Pandora, go to your room. Spotify, stop copying Pandora. You know, <laughs> other than those, those maps that are uh, map equipment following you, you know who else is watching you? Anybody? You? Anybody guess? You're looking at I'm me watching right now. you right now. Uh, Facebook's watching you too. Facebook said of that course. they're working on a location based mobile advertising product. That's just a fancy way of saying Facebook's going to give you ads on your mobile device depending on where you are. Now, Colin Sebastian, an analyst at Robert W. B- Bard and Companies, thinks that by combining your location with everything Facebook already knows about you, you're looking at some pretty targeted ads. Sharp just introduced the world's first 90-inch full HD 1080 LED LCD TV. Need more acronyms? <laughs> I'm out. Uh, this is for the consumer home theater market. The new model LC90 LE745U is in stores now. You can buy it with a suggested retail price of $10,999, but don't, don't pay that. You should be able to find a street price of only around $9,999. The set uses full array LED backlighting, comprising 500 individual white LEDs positioned in sectors running across the entire back pane of the panel. It offers 1080p resolution and is 3D capable. Not 3D, not capable. <laughs> On stage at the Lo Web conference today, Bradley Horowitz demoed a prototype Google Plus account running on Flipboard. Currently, Flipboard is only available on iOS, but they keep saying an Android version is coming soon. The actual Google Plus on Flipboard launch is to be determined, but as luck would have it, Google I.O. is next week. Square keeps adding features to Square Register. Say hello to Square Rewards. It'll give vendors who use Square, uh, they'll have the ability to create digital uh, loyalty cards. So that's like if you buy five coffees, you get one free, that kind of thing. Not to be outdone, though, Google Offers also launched an app, an iOS app in the United States, that shows you nearby deals. Frustrated with Facebook's attempt to make you buy the Facebook credits? Well, good news, folks. They're going away. Facebook, not Facebook, Facebook credits. Facebook announced it will slowly move away from its credits initiative to a model where users can purchase virtual goods and apps in your local currency. The new currency system will begin in July, and Facebook plans to phase out credits entirely by the end of 2012. And that's a look at the news fuse. We got some discussion stories to get to in just a second, especially that Microsoft Surface and uh, the planes flying over and the barbecue controversy. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, ShareFile by Citrix. In business, we rely on sending and receiving important materials through email every day, but there's a lot of risk placing large and confidential files as regular attachments. You got legal documents, you got sensitive photos of prototypes. There's no guarantee the attachment will go through. Anybody could could use it. Uh, That's why we use ShareFile by Citrix here at Twit. It's the better way to send and receive files of almost any size. With ShareFile, you can easily and securely send everything from large documents, spreadsheets, PowerPoints. Files are sent as a link. It, it works right inside of Outlook if you use that. You don't get any bounce backs. You can track when it's been downloaded and set access controls with passwords so you know it's secure. Plus, ShareFile allows you to store your files in the cloud so you can access them from anywhere. Your laptop, your tablet, your smartphone. Uh, you you got to try it. It's, it's the best way if you're concerned about the security of something to make sure that you're getting it to the right person and only that person and no one else sees it. To get you started, we have a special offer. Sign up today and receive a 30-day risk-free trial. Don't take our word for it. Try it for free. Go to sharefile.com, click on the radio microphone, and enter the promo code TNT. Remember, visit sharefile.com, type in that promo code TNT and show your support for Sharefile for showing their support of Tech News Today.
So uh, I, as and I, and a big thanks to Tim Stevens for joining us, covered the announcement of the Microsoft Surface tablets yesterday. There's two tablets, if you didn't hear. One, the Microsoft Surface RT is an ARM-based tablet uh, that will run the Windows uh, 8 version for ARM, which is called Windows RT. The other is an Intel-based tablet, which will be called the Microsoft Surface Pro, running Windows 8 Pro. Now, the RT is coming along with Windows 8 whenever that's released. We don't know when that is. The Pro is coming about 90 days after. They didn't give us any pricing information. They didn't tell us who's making this. Microsoft doesn't actually manufacture hardware, so they've got somebody else assembling it, just like, you know, Apple has Foxconn make things like the iPad and the iPhone. But did you all get a chance uh, to see this? Sarah, you were saying you were at the pub last night, and everybody's kind of following this along on their yeah. phones. What was the general impression? What did you think? General impression, it was weird because obviously uh, I'm I'm much later on, which... You know, I, I now understand what people in the UK and, and general feel when we have uh, uh, afternoon events in Pacific time. That said, we were all sort of at the pub looking, saying, okay, it's a service. It's what's the price? What's the price? Anyone? Anyone? And we all realized later, oh, they just weren't going to announce that, which is like, for me, all of this seems really great. But I want to know what the price is. I assume that they have to undercut Apple somehow. Because if they don't undercut Apple, they probably won't succeed. Just based on the fact that Android tablets that haven't undercut Apple on price in the past haven't really gone anywhere. So where the heck is the price? They said uh, that the books, that the, the tablets would be priced equivalent to other similar tablets in the marketplace, but that doesn't really tell us a whole it lot. It doesn't, though. I mean, that's like, I mean, a tablet, what does that mean? It's a tablet that, that has the same uh, tenant screen. What, what does that mean? Well, they're obviously comparing it to all the other Windows RT tablets that we know the pricing of, which is like nothing. So we're all going to find <laughs> well, out the exact same I think they met Android time. tablets, so well, like similar tablets in the market. Well, they could be really particular. The question is whether what the Windows license is going to do to the price of a tablet. I mean, and they said the Intel tablet would be like Ultrabooks. So my guess is it's going to be around $500 for the RT and about $1,000 or less for the uh, for the Intel. So why so? I think the Ultrabook thing was coming down to $699. i am thinking the Pro is going to be around $699, $799. But I don't think it's going to hit $1,000. And then what, $2,399 for the, for the smaller one, for, for the RT one? I'm thinking, yeah, $399 for the smaller one. And then all the accessories brings it way up. But this all brings up the question of why would Microsoft announce it now? when they don't have these details. Brian, what did, what did you think of this? And did, do you have an opinion well, uh, on that? First of all, I mean, it's, uh, is, is it just agreed that this is to steal thunder from Google I.O. next week? I mean, that, that has to be the reason because they didn't give any significant details outside of to give complete uh, flash and trash and to blow everyone away. Now, I, I disagree on the price thing. I actually think this could be more expensive than the iPads and still win if they position itself as the iPad is a toy this is an actual functioning laptop computer no, that happens no, to be crammed no, into. No. I am sorry. I don't want to interrupt you, Brian, but <laughs> who really believes at, the, at this point? Uh, believes what? That, uh, that, they, that it would be as powerful as a PC or, no, or what? Who, you're saying that if Microsoft positioned itself as like, we're the tool, the iPad is a toy. Who actually believes that the iPad is just a toy at this point? Well, it's it's definitely not a PC, and it's scaled down functionality. It's not the full OS, uh, OS, uh, Mac OS. It is it is its own independent thing. If they could position this as a complete, fully functional PC, all of your work apps work on it. You you no longer have to carry around your physical laptop. Instead, you could be one of these guys in a small form factor device, but have the full power of a PC. I think that mes message would definitely resonate with uh, with enterprise customers. And Microsoft has enterprise uh, relationships that Apple doesn't have. And Apple sort of would mind having, but they're not out there pursuing them. So whether it's actually a toy or not, Microsoft might win that argument in a few purchasing managers' offices, if nothing else. And that's that's the way, how Microsoft is dominated on the desktop. It's not by going to the consumer. It's going to the enterprise. So they're sort of straddling the line here and saying, hey, we want to appeal to the consumer because that's where the, the space is really being fought. But we think we can fall back on that enterprise uh Huge and keep market in mind price. also, Tom, that there's a, you know, I take with me this ridiculous 12-pound behemoth because I spend so much time on the road, and there are just a lot of things that you flat out cannot do on iPads. And iPad's great as a, as a middle device between your smartphone and your laptop. It's great when you're on a flight. It's great when you're killing time or just checking email. But I can't run my stage show off of 
off of a, uh, an iPad, but I can use all the exact same tools that I'm using right now to fully control my stage show and, and use it all on the small form factor tablet style device. That would be a dream come true. And I'd pay $1,200 for the thing as long as the battery power was good enough and the, and the, uh, the processing power was enough. Now, what about the uh, the keyboard? Is that is that going to work for you? I mean, those, that's a pretty amazing cover that Microsoft came out with. It looks like the uh, cover for the iPad, but it has a keyboard on one side of it that it works by Bluetooth. We need to I be am, able to type on it to find out, but they say it's just as easy to type on as any other keyboard. Yeah, although they said that, and then they wouldn't let anyone Anybody touch, touch it. it. Nobody yeah. was allowed to even tap out a single sentence on it, which, again, that's that's fine because – they would only stand to lose if they allowed journalists to get their hands on it because that somebody could be like, oh, well, I mistyped this one word, so it's not as good as they said. But for right now, they're allowing us to project what the experience will be like onto it. I tell you, it's gorgeous. It's, uh, it's a step in the right direction, and I think it's the only play that Microsoft could have made in order to, to, to get a good foothold in the tablet market. And, if they, and again, if they could position this as the next logical step, the evolution of, of the, the – it's kind of like uh, – when the nano, when the iPod Nano got so small, it ceased to exist and instead just became the iPhone. Likewise, if if your work PC can get so thin and light that it ceases to be a PC, but instead becomes this Microsoft Surface, then uh, that I think it could work. Also, I think they did some phenomenal judo by by co-opting the Surface name for four years. Uh, the only thing that, or I guess five years, the only thing that Surface has meant to us was that really slick looking table demo. And by taking that word and flipping it, they bring along all that goodwill, the, that association we have with Microsoft Surface, and they apply it to this very slick looking device. You know, with, with the whole tool versus toy argument, I mean, this is something that a Android tablets and phones have tried against the iPhone because it's so closed off, it's so different. But the real thing is, it's about the execution. If this device doesn't deliver, if it doesn't have the best Windows 8 experience, and they don't show you what you can do with it, I mean, something as simple as multitasking and actually having two windows up and actually being able to run your old application that you had before or not using this little stopgap device, if Microsoft can actually explain that properly, that would be quite the feat. Because, I mean, their marketing message hasn't exactly been great for anything other than Xbox. Uh, the Zune had some really good hardware, but it was way behind. The thing is, can Microsoft push enough to the consumers that this product is something that is better than these other devices. It does more because I know I was looking at certain Android tablets and I kind of wanted to use it to have multiple windows up at one time. And now to see Microsoft actually go, look, hey, look, we actually have a tablet that will do that and our operating system is built for that. It's a tablet most of the time. You can make it a laptop if you want to. It might be the device I was looking for. We're going to let Scott X have the last word. He emailed us and said, The Microsoft announcement touted the Surface to be always on the go, lightweight, mobile. But there was one missing piece. What about data plans? Granted, they have not disclosed the full spec, but it surprised me to see that this was not even mentioned. I understand not everyone gets a data plan, but from a consumer standpoint, this is a big non-starter to not be baked into the product. I, I, I as and I noticed I'm that sure at, at the be. end of the uh, announcement, that there was no data plan announced. There may not be a data plan announced. That might be the salve to the hardware developers is to say, look, micro, we're going to do this, you guys. We know you don't like it. It's going to be a Microsoft signature edition, but we won't build a data plan into this. It will work on Wi-Fi and we'll leave the data plan market of tablets to you. So are you saying it wouldn't even have the functionality to connect to a cellular? Yeah, uh, well, just like half the y iPad models don't and lots of people oh. buy them. They sell lots of them. I, I, I understand why they wouldn't want to, again, if their end goal is to position this as a PC that just happens to look like that awesome device from Apple, then, uh, then I can understand them not mentioning data plans, even though the capability would be there. Because you, you would see that if this was a laptop announcement, you wouldn't expect them to mention a data plan. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what their angle is on that. Yeah, I would assume if they were going to have da a data radio built in here, they'd say it comes with a 3G or LTE radio. Uh, that they wouldn't just pass that by. All right, let's move on. We got other tablet rumors now. Uh, as we mentioned, Brian mentioned that maybe Microsoft was trying to steal a little thunder from Google and the Google tablet rumors are starting to build. Yeah, yet another report from Digitimes saying the Google Nexus tablet is, which is jointly developed with Asus, will be introduced at Google I.O. for starts on June 27th. A lot of people have been expecting that. And the specs that we've heard before, 7-inch form factor, Wi-Fi only with a price point of under $200 and it would be available in July. Uh, but they're not going to have competition from LG, by the way, because LG decided that they are no longer going to do tablets. And, and a message from one of the spokespeople, they said, we've decided to put all new tablet development on the back burner for the time being in order to focus on smartphones. And LG made the Optimus Pad LTE, which 
I had to look up personally. I, I, I'll admit that because I don't remember <laughs> what LG made. I know they made the Optimus phone. I wasn't aware of their tablet, uh, and they need to do that. So I guess well, this is a Kindle, this is a Kindle Fire alternative, right? So it's like LG wasn't really in the running anyway. I think Google actually has a pretty good chance of disrupting that market that Amazon has. I mean, the Kindle Fire has been wildly successful. The price point had a big uh, uh, had had a big part to do with it. So this makes sense for Google. A lot of people thought Microsoft was going to go after Kindle, and they didn't. Brian, do you think we see a surprise, or is Sarah right? All the bets are on some sort of Kindle Fire-like device. Uh, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think what we're seeing this week is we're seeing Microsoft enter into the high-end competition against Apple. And I think we're seeing next week we're going to see Google enter the low-end competition. Now, keep in mind, uh, it's always tougher for, for the second person to join that fight. And I think uh, Kindle Fire may have already established a dominant position on the low end as being, when I say cheap tablet, you think of the Fire. When I say expensive tablet, you think of the iPad. And I think with, with this this new device, I don't know if it's even going to be a competition for the Kindle Fire because Kindle Fire was about getting a price point and the technology that was actually in the device is kind of like used parts. The thing is, Google and, and NVIDIA, because this will be NVIDIA-powered, uh, like Tegra 3, this is going to be a pretty powerful machine compared mm -hmm. to something like the Fire. On top of that, Ice Cream Sandwich is so well done at this point. It is so like clean that what Amazon had to do to skin the fire. This isn't even necessary any, anymore because a seven-inch device running ice cream sandwich that's just plain could be a very compelling product because it's polished. It's way more polished than Honeycomb was or previous iterations. All right, let's uh, go to the Spotify news now, Sarah. It looks like uh, they're giving us something for free finally. Yeah, exactly. They're they're basically. <laughs> replicating exactly what Pandora does as a business model, except that Spotify also has its music subscription model. Now, the Pandora model only works in the U.S. because Spotify's radio service, which is brand new, is working under the DMCA compliant rules, meaning, exactly like Pandora, they pay performance royalties to license music. That's how they get money. It's ad-supported. And there aren't any restrictions like there are on Spotify streaming. For example, uh, who was, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the band that, that you know wouldn't that refused to be part of Spotify. There are a few bands. That yeah, there that. there have been several. I can't remember which one. There's I know Adele, which one you're trying to think of. The Beatles. Well, <laughs> the Beatles. <laughs> well, no, there was a band that was part of other streaming services. Oh, yeah, exactly. I was thinking. I was Coldplay. thinking of like a yeah. A, a, well, it, was, it wasn't even Coldplay. But anyway, you got, we're all in agreement. So we understand that the difference between streaming music is like, streaming music is great. You pay a certain uh, monthly subscription fee. On Spotify, it's free on the web, but you have to pay for it on mobile. Except that on Pandora, the whole thing is free because they're working almost as if they're a radio station, right? So they're just paying royalties, but they don't actually make a lot of money. So it's kind of interesting that Spotify has said, okay, we're basically just going to like beat Pandora at their game. We all, we already uh, offer a, a subscription fee if you want to access our service via mobile. But let's say you want to just access something that acts a lot like Pandora via mobile. It'll just be free too, which is, which is great because uh, Spotify has so many users that it's like this is still there – I feel like uh, Spotify does this where they'll offer sort of too good to be true offerings because they figure, okay, well, if, you know, 10,000 people sign up for this, maybe 1,000 people will start paying and we end up making money. And we make up, yeah. This, it's a lost leader model. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The thing about this is, is like, this is a U.S. only model though. This is not a, this is not a model that scales and Spotify is perhaps best known internationally. They came to the U.S. much later than they did uh, to, uh, to Europe. And I wonder how many people who love Pandora right now and use Pandora all the time say, well, we like uh, Spotify better, we'll move over. I, I, don't, I don't see me personally doing that. I'll give you this. I ignore the Spotify app entirely because I'm, I don't want to subscribe and what good is it otherwise? This will at least make me investigate it again, which is what Spotify wants. So be like, all right, I'll try this out, see what it's like. But I don't think I would switch to it from Pandora when I want that kind of created station because Pandora's got the algorithm. They've got the Music Genome Project. And I just yeah. don't see the social graph being as good at delivering good music. Brian? 
Yeah, it's the weirdest thing. You know, Og, one of the things that they offered uh, is they offered a slider bar that let you do a Pandora-style radio station where, let's say, you want to do the Gorillaz radio, and maybe one in eight songs is a Gorilla song and everything else is similar music, or you could slide it all the way to Gorillaz only. Uh, I thought this was a very novel feature, but, uh, but I didn't like the mix it was coming up with. It, it didn't nail the style of music the way Pandora did. And uh, Pandora, I think, has done a phenomenal job. I find myself in the bizarre position of paying a monthly subscription to Mog, but using Pandora for radio for free. Which, and, and I'm using Pandora way more than Mog. And it's like I, every time I wonder, I'm like, why am I paying eight bucks a month for essentially the, the only three songs that I don't own that I listen to on, on Mog instead? I kind of like the the, uh, the social graph element of this because I know that when I go into Pandora, I get pretty locked down in this particular kind of music. And sometimes when I want to branch out, I don't even know what to start as a seed song for that. So I have to go into like some random genre, which doesn't work. I have to pay a lot of attention to what I'm listening to versus what, how I used to be in college. I just asked my friends, hey, what do you have? And if they have a similar style, I would just go through their – we had CDs back then. We used to look through their CDs and I'd pluck a couple out and I would I would – look that way and this kind of uh social element to me i think that works because i know when it comes to facebook it's always it comes up on your newsfeed who's listening to what you start seeing who your friends are when it comes to musical tastes you start you Hating might try your out. friends because you're like really <laughs> you're more are willing, you a speedwagon merit come on more willing to try out other songs maybe give it a, a, another chance because you thought hey you know i have the same taste maybe i should give it another chance all right flipboard's got a new partner that we're going to announce actually they already announced it. So we're going to talk about it uh, but first want to thank our other sponsor gazelle you want that new ipad that new android you want that windows surface tablet you want whatever google's going to announce you need some cash so sell your used iPhone, your iPad, your iPod, your Mac, or your smartphone to Gazelle and get some cash to trade up. Uh, it's really easy. Go to gazelle.com. You get a risk-free quote. Uh, you don't have to do anything. You can lock it in for 30 days. You've got 30 days to decide if you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to let go of this iPad, but I'm going to get $385. Maybe I'll let go. I don't know. you got 30 days to decide before you send it. It locks in the quote. And in fact, if... You describe the condition a little harshly. If you're too hard on yourself, they'll actually give you more. If they get it, they're like, no, this is in much better shape. They'll upgrade it for you. Uh, mail your box to Gazelle. They give you a, a printout. So you slap that on the box, put, drop it off at the, at the postal place uh, or the FedEx place, whatever they've got for you, uh, and you get paid fast. You can get it by check. You can get it by PayPal. You get an Amazon gift card. In fact, you get a 5% bonus if you get the Amazon gift card. Great way to get cash to put towards the latest gadget. So go check it out. Gazelle can help us all feel better about our gadget habits because they're not just filling up the garage. They're getting back out there and getting useful. Visit gazelle.com for your risk-free quote today. Do it now because the sooner you do, the more money your gadgets will be worth. Gazelle.com, we thank them for their support of Tech News Today. So Sarah, what's going on with Flipboard and Google? They're getting all friendly out there at the web. Yeah, in fact, um, on stage uh, this morning at LeWeb, Bradley Horowitz, who is the Google Plus head, officially the VP of Google Product Management, announced Google Plus is going to start running on Flipboard via the Google Plus API. Now, it's not actually live yet. You and I cannot actually... We can't... Uh, we can't hook up our Google Plus accounts to our Flipboard accounts, even if we have it, because it's not live yet. But it was just a little taste of what's to come. I suspect this is something that they're going to hold in their back pocket until Google I.O. next week. Because why would they announce something that's pretty exciting at LeWeb when they can announce it at their own conference? Not that LeWeb is an exciting conference, but it seems like the good, the good opportunity to generate some buzz so that next week we all know what's coming and people get excited. So what's the deal? So uh, obviously Flipboard, not yet available on Android, but iOS only. Um, Google Plus has an app, not an iPad app, but that's the kind of cool thing about Flipboard is Flipboard works really, really well on the iPad. So if Google Plus has an inroad to the iPad, it almost keeps them from having to rush to put out an iPad app, which Google Plus does not have yet. There's an iPhone app that you can run on the iPad. It works fine, but it's one of those 2X things where it's not really native. It's somewhat universal, but it's, it's one not of those things that works fine until you finally get an iPad designed version and you're like, oh, this is the way. Goodreads just did that. Where Goodreads finally came out with an iPad version. I was like, oh, I never minded before, but now I would never go back to running the iPhone app on the iPad. Exactly. And, and it's the sort of thing where 
when there are somewhat equivalent apps that do have uh, iPad enabled apps, you look you look at something like uh, Google Plus and you go. I mean, what's the deal? What are they waiting for? So this is the sort of thing where Flipboard is extremely popular, certainly in certain circles. Not everybody is using Flipboard and certainly not the Android community, which is a huge untapped market. And I'm sure Jason could tell you more about that. But it's a little bit of like a, I feel like it's like a, let's just test out the market. Let's see how Google Plus does when we unleash our API to millions of users. Because Google Plus still has that somewhat weird scenario where they say they have hundreds of millions of users. And in fact, on stage, Horowitz um, did quote hundreds of millions of users, although he did say that they're not experiencing hyper growth, whatever that means. But that sounds to me like they still have to figure out what is the best way for people to use Google Plus on mobile devices? I, I think uh, you're right. I think we'll probably get a Flipboard announcement at Google I.O., probably that it comes out of beta and it's available widespread and in, in the Google Play Store officially and all that sort of thing. Uh, but I, I, I think it's really interesting about Flipboard talking about its value. Is Flipboard the, the sweetheart now? Is it the next Instagram? I think Flipboard is 100% the – well, I mean, I say it's the next Instagram just because that's the way that we, we gauge whatever the next big company is going to be. Flipboard to me is so much more valuable than Instagram. And I use Instagram quite a bit, but Flipboard is actually a way that I use many other services. I use Twitter. I use Facebook. I use – well, it'll be Google Plus eventually. I use a variety of RSS feeds. Flipboard is – Extremely valuable to me. And I wonder, why didn't Google just buy Flipboard? Are they trying to buy Flipboard? It would be a really good get as far as I'm concerned for, for Google. Round the horn real quickly before we move on. Brian Brushwood, you going to buy Flipboard? Uh, uh, they should. They, uh, they missed the boat on Instagram, and Instagram went to a prettier lady. So, yeah, go for it. And uh, Ayaz, what about you? Am I buying it? No. <laughs> what are you, what are you, <laughs> are you what buying Flipboard? I'm not buying Ayaz. Flipboard. I will not be buying Flipboard. But I think I, I think if Google works with Flipboard well enough, I mean, that's a really good platform because it's you just consume content so quickly on that thing. You can have ads so easily integrated that you don't notice it. Just like uh, Pinterest, the same kind of you are getting eyeballs. And Flipboard's really good at that. Round the horn on this one as well. We're going to start with you. Brian Brushwood. Uh, Senator yes. Charles Schumer of New York has written to Google and Apple. He's concerned about these aerial mapping planes. Schumer thinks Google and Apple have upgraded their capabilities to aircraft-based photography that can see through windows and capture detailed images with four-inch resolution. They're spying on us while we barbecue. We heard him say that earlier. Uh, detailed photographs could provide criminals and terrorists with detailed views of sensitive utilities. Think of the bikini-clad men barbecuing and planning terrorist acts. How are... Wait, I'm all confused. What's going on here? Brian, is this something we need to worry about, the drones overhead mapping things? Uh, well, look, this is, this is first of all, yes, you absolutely need to worry about drones, uh, but not the ones from Apple. You should be worried about the ones from the government. In Austin, they, uh, they just applied for funding for drones and eventually armed drones, armed drones that, they, that can shoot people if they need to. This is, this is insane to me and the height of hypocrisy that a government official with a straight face can say, I'm deeply concerned about the drones from Apple. <laughs> it is it is ridiculous and it drives me nuts because the thing is like Apple they're accountable if they cross the line it's bad publicity they have a profit motive to not violate privacy and to provide their service without pissing off the general public the government has none of that and I can't believe it is such a smokescreen to make this about Apple when the really thing you should be worried about are the government spying on ourselves Dr. Mom in the chat room says he's being silly no one on Long Island has a private barbecue you start up the charcoal throw on the chicken and the neighbors all drop in <laughs> <laughs> the drones would just help everybody find the barbecue. Sarah, are you worried about this? Not at all. I mean, this is this is sort of thing where it's like Google's used to uh, blurring license plates when people got upset about Google Street View type of thing. Uh, Apple is trying to put together maps uh, technology, and if people get upset about this or that, they can take it on a case by case basis. I don't see this hindering their business model at all. No. Last word to you, I am. I am for one of Schumer's recommendations that the communities are alerted when they are being mapped because then I would do something silly 
to my house. So when they are mapping it, I want this to be true. Now, and this, you have a history of this. This has actually happened. Now, we're going to bring up an image. I, I was very bored in the suburbs at some point. And if you can see, there's somewhat of a lightning bolt on my lawn because I decided to make some lawn art. This is the old place you used to this live This is my in, old house east. on the East Coast. And it's still on Google Maps. Now, everyone asked me, how did you know they were going to take photos that day? I had no idea. And I would have done a better job if I had the ability to know when this was going to happen. And uh, that's not my house Wait, anymore. so hold on. Hold on. You did this just kind of for fun, not I, for Google? I did that for me because when I drove into my house, I wanted to see something really cool. And a lightning bolt's pretty cool. Do you fly into <laughs> your house? Not, How do you, you see it? It's, was, well, it's, from, on a, it's on a hill. From on high. It's, oh, on, a, he's, it's on a hill. Right? Yeah, my house is on a hill, so the, or was on a hill. So you would see the lightning bolt as you came in. And everyone would ask, are you a Tampa Bay lightning fan? It's like, no. <laughs> no, I like the Flash. I'm a big fan of the Flash. All right, let's finish up with the iRobot. Uh, this sounds like a retreat to me. The iRobot now has a remote control. Yes, more suburban stuff here. Okay, there's a, a new uh, a Roomba uh, vacuum cleaner, the 790, which has a wireless command center remote control. Now, I know other Roombas had remotes. This one actually is like a game pad. You can use a steering function and guide the Roomba to dirty spots, activate spot cleaning, all kinds of things. So you can just sit there and kind of command the robot. Now, when I saw this story this morning, I misread it entirely. I was hoping that maybe there's like an application or a web interface and all the data that the, the Roomba gathers in finding the, the actual dimensions of the room, like you had access to that, maybe gamify the whole thing. You know, that's a dirty spot there. Set up virtual walls. This is not as cool as what I made up in my head. And this bothers me because it's 700 bucks. It's a robot vacuum, and now i got to sit around and just go around. Oh, it's got my touchpad. I can do this. Now it can run on its own, obviously. Well, that's the whole thing with Roomba is you don't have to bother with it. Do you need the added control of the wireless command center? I feel like this is going back in time to be like, look, there's a spot over there. Go over there, Roomba. Here's my remote. Like The whole point is that you leave, and when you come back... An hour later, or however long, it's just done, and you don't have to think about it. I don't want to think about it. Brian, Especially do you want to think to about something. it? Yeah, I mean, does, I mean, wait, well, the thing that's even worse than thinking about it is having to do it yourself. This smells suspiciously like actual <laughs> work, which is the one thing I don't want with my robot vacuums. And some of the features they add on the remote is stuff that you can do on the actual robot, like set the, the timer. So instead of bending over and pushing schedule, you now have a pad. Now, I, I, I get why this could be cool, because yeah. there are ways to make the Roomba do a lot of things it's not designed to do. And, and you having, can hack it now with the remote. Right, you can do that. So you got the remote. So there's that, that point. That point aside, I still think this should have been an app or a web interface. And so, oh, well, I maybe it will. Maybe they'll have, maybe they'll get there eventually. Maybe this is the first step. Well, yeah. Then you could you could have the blueprint and point yeah. out that's always dirty. Wi-Fi connected to the Wi-Fi. For goodness sake. All right, we got better robot news coming in the randomizer. Randomizer. Researchers at the University of Southern California's Viterbi School of Engineering have developed an artificial finger that can detect texture better than human fingers. This has been a big deal for robotics for a long time is to be able to have the sensitivity of a human finger. Uh, it has a soft exterior skin that surrounds a liquid filling and a bone-like core. Inside the core is a hydrophone, an underwater microphone, which detects vibrations. And the team says it can detect a directional force, temperature, uh, and does a better job than we do. Just like one, one step closer to like Luke Skywalker's hand, effectively. I mean, really, I'm not, I'm not even kidding. A prosthetic that can no, actually no, yeah. not to, crush things. To, what this makes me think of, Ayaz, is um, uh, like uh, the beginning of a cochlear implant, right? So if, if as long as you have a way to, to send some kind of electrical signal to represent what different textures feel like, uh, the brain can adapt and, and make that sensation mean softer or bumpy or, or different types of braille or whatever. I think this is a... This is phenomenal. Yeah, this is a huge advance. This is re really cool stuff. And it's DARPA related, of course, as all these things tend to be. So uh, we'll get to the calendar in just a second. But want to thank our other sponsor for today's show, Carbonite Online Backup. Uh, you need to back up your files and you need to have them in three places. You need to have them on the computer they're on. You need to have a local backup, and you need to have a backup in the cloud. Carbonite backs things up automatically and continually keeps them safely off-site, away from a computer crash or nasty viruses or fire or theft. Your files are automatically continually backed up, stored safely off-site with Carbonite. And after you have a computer disaster, and don't say I won't because never say never, it's really easy to restore them. Plus, you can access your backed-up files privately on any computer or on your smartphone or iPad with a free app. 
Unlimited backup for your PC or Mac is only $59 a year. But you don't have to pay a dime to try it because you're watching Tech News today. Go to Carbonite.com, enter the offer code TNT. You'll get two bonus months free if you decide to buy with that offer code TNT. Be sure to sign up for the free trial from the homepage to get those two months free. You don't need a credit card to try it out for free. That's Carbonite.com, offer code TNT. We thank them for their support of Tech News today. What's on the calendar, London version of Sarah? Glad you asked, San Francisco version of Tom, or Petaluma, actually. The Canon EO, EOS 1DX launch day is tomorrow. Supply will be limited. We have mentioned that in the past. It's also going to be $6,800. So if you put My the money, money's limited you've too. probably yeah. already reserved one. So you go nuts. Tell us how awesome it is. The Harry Potter eBooks are now available at this moment to borrow from the Kindle store. Starting this moment, if not earlier. The Windows Phone Developer Summit starts tomorrow. Who's excited for Windows Phone 8 Apollo? Me, I, as in uh, Alex, Alex Gumpel and Mary Jo Foley are, because we're going to cover it live at 9 a.m. Pacific, right here live. 9 a.m. Pacific time, exactly. Fi finally, the wireless Sonos Sub, we've talked about it before. It's, not avail it's now available for sale, six ninety nine, arriving July thirtieth. It's beautiful. It's thin. It's got a little thing in the middle. I don't even know what that means. You can pick it up and hold it, but it's beautiful subwoofer. <laughs> All right, let's check what's incoming before we incoming go. Incoming message. Uh, Tim from Nashville writes in and says one thing about the Facebook purchase of Face dot com is this: if you recall, in March there was a movement where Facebook tried to trademark the word book. He's got a link to the slash dot post about it. By buying face.com, they get trademark protections that face already owns. I wonder how much like.com is. Nice thought, Tim. Good point about face.com. You get it. You get trademark protection when you buy a company for that trademark, right? If That's they have a trademark, the deal. On, yeah. If they have a trademark on them, and they, and they well, do. they better. Yeah, well, no, I mean, they, they they do. It's, yeah, yeah, it doesn't mean it's strong or anything, but they have one. I, I just figured it's going to end up being a URL shortener. Face.com slash. Oh yeah, but they, they but, yeah, but the trademark all kinds are of there. directions they can go with that. Good thought, uh, Tim. And maybe they will buy Like. dot com. Who owns Like. dot com? It's a good question. We'll take a look at that and see Search what it has to say. Brian Brushwood, thank you so much uh, uh, for joining us. Uh, let me thank our subredditors uh, first, and then we'll, we'll get to the Scam School book because it's important news for people who like Scam School books. Uh, Technewstoday.reddit.com is the place to go to submit stories uh, that we cover each and every day. We thank everybody who submits those stories, and we thank the moderators, too, for making a great place on Reddit to let us know what you'd like us to cover. Technewstoday.reddit.com. So where are you in relation to Fifty Shades of Grey right now? Uh, you know what? Breaking news, Tom. Uh, still number seven behind Shades of Fifty Shades of Grey. You know that's what drives me nuts on the iTunes ranking is they, uh, they there's this three to four hour lag, so we actually don't know how we're doing. However, uh, you know I know that that a difference of just a couple hundred units sold is the difference between hitting number one. So that's why book one's only ninety nine cents. People, if you enjoy my appearances on the show, why don't you keep me uh, happy and buy this book for ninety nine cents? You know we may have changed all that with the lag in in the way this stuff up dates we have no idea that's right we'll find out sooner or later but don't don't wait to buy it's a good book for 99 cents you're getting a hell of a deal too i gotta say uh, yes and, and book book two is even better that that one is is only 9.99 think about it this way if you buy them together it's less than 11 bucks and it's 150 plus tricks over uh 200 uh audio commentaries and video illustrations uh, it's over a gigabyte large. It's it's phenomenal. I've never been more proud of anything I've ever made, and I'm including my children in that. Wow. Hmm. hmm. Well, how does Bonnie feel about that? I'm I, I'm even more proud of the book than Bonnie. <laughs> All right, uh, check it out. Brian Brushwood's Scam School book available at scamschoolbook.com and in the iTunes store. Don't forget uh, to find us on the web at twit.tv uh, slash TNT. You can also email us tnt at twit.tv or give us a call, 260-TNT-SHOW. We'll be back tomorrow with Sarah Lane from the web in London and Jason Heiner from Tech Republic. We'll see you then.
Tech News Today is brought to you by ShareFile. Enhance your workflow, send files of almost any size easily and securely with ShareFile by Citrix. Try ShareFile today. For a 30-day free trial, go to ShareFile.com, click the radio microphone, and enter the promo code TNT. I want to thank our sponsor, ShareFile by Citrix. In business, we rely on sending and receiving important materials through email every day, but there's a lot of risk placing large and confidential files as regular attachments. You got legal documents, you got sensitive photos of prototypes. There's no guarantee the attachment will go through. Anybody could could use it. Uh, That's why we use ShareFile by Citrix here at Twit. It's the better way to send and receive files of almost any size. With ShareFile, you can easily and securely send everything from large documents, spreadsheets, PowerPoints. Files are sent as a link. It, it works right inside of Outlook. If you use that, you don't get any bounce backs. You can track when it's been downloaded and set access controls with passwords so you know it's secure. Plus, ShareFile allows you to store your files in the cloud so you can access them from anywhere, your laptop, your tablet, your smartphone. Uh, you you got to try it. It's, it's the best way if you're concerned about the security of something to make sure that you're getting it to the right person and only that person and no one else sees it. To get you started, we have a special offer. Sign up today and receive a 30-day risk-free trial. Don't take our word for it. Try it for free. Go to sharefile.com, click on the radio microphone, and enter the promo code TNT. Remember, visit sharefile.com, type in that promo code TNT and show your support for Sharefile for showing their support of Tech News Today.